Hi friends, it's Miss Nikki, here to share some bedtime stories with you guys. I am excited to be here. Hi. So, um, I hope you guys enjoy our story time stories for tonight. We're going to start over here with one of my favorite series, the Itty Bitty Bio series. And this one is about Booker T. Washington. All right, here we go. So here's our title page. And of course, like we've talked about before with the Itty Bitty Bios, it has just the title, Booker T. Washington, and then the name of the series right here. And here we have our table of contents, my story, timeline, glossary, and index. I'm hoping I can get my lighting just right here so you guys can see the pictures. All right, here we go. I was born in Virginia. It was 1856. I was black. I came from a family of slaves. Where and when were you born? I've talked about this recently. I was born in Missouri in 1982. Slavery ended when I was nine. I was free. My family was free, but we were poor. I had to work. I wanted to go to school. My mother understood. She supported me. She bought me a book. I taught myself to read. I had to keep working, but I also went to school. I worked my way through college. I became a teacher. Wow! Teachers are so great. All right, here we go. I was asked to lead a new school. It was in Tuskegee, Alabama. It was a school for black people. It had few resources. I knew I could help. Why is it important to go to school? Well, it's important to learn, even if you don't go to a, a school building, <clears throat> getting an education is really important. You can do it at home, though. The school taught trades. Students learned skills. They joined the working world. I wanted them to get jobs. I wanted them to earn a good living. I think that that's what all teachers want for their students. It's difficult to see this picture even in person. Let me see if I can get it a little bit where you guys can see it. I led Tuskegee to great success. It became strong. It had plenty of resources. I was proud of my students. I believed in the power of education. I believe in that too. I had other ideas. I thought jobs and money were the best way for blacks to advance. I shared my ideas. I wrote books. I formed groups. I gave speeches. There's a picture of him giving a speech in front of a big crowd. Well, he sure looks fired up, doesn't he? <coughs> Excuse me. I worked to help my community until my death. I was a self-made man. I was a champion of education. What would you like to ask me? I think I would ask Mr. Booker T. Washington, what was his favorite subject in school? Was it math or was it reading or was it something else? That's what I would do. All right, so here's our timeline. Right here in 1856, Booker T. Washington was born. 
1865, <coughs> excuse me, his mama got him his first book. In 1881, he became a teacher. And in 1915 was when he died. He lived a good long life. Now back here we have our glossary. And this gives us, of course, the definitions of the words that we learned today. Advance means to move forward. Champion, a person who stands up for another person or an idea. Resources, money or other useful things like books and paper and pencils and um, tissues for your classroom. Self-made, successful because of hard work. Slaves, people who are owned by other people. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies have been just terrible today. I know a lot of people are having that same issue. All right, so our next story for tonight is called A Letter to Amy. And this one is written by Ezra Jack Keats written and illustrated. I really like Ezra Jack Keats. His books are a little bit old. They've been around for a while, but I really love the illustrations and just the way he writes stories. So here we are on our title page. Ezra Jack Keats, that's our author illustrator, A Letter to Amy. That's our title. Down here, we have our publisher's information. And you can see there's some illustrations already getting us started here. This is a mailbox. Not like one you have at your house, but one you find on the street or in front of a store. There we go. I'm writing a letter to Amy. I'm inviting her to my party, Peter announced. Well, why don't you just ask her? You didn't write to anyone else, said his mother. Peter stared at the sheet of paper for a while and said, Well, this way, it's sort of special. He folded the letter quite a few times, put it in the envelope, and sealed it. Now I'll mail it, he said. What did you write? His mother asked. Will you please come to my birthday party? Peter. You should tell her when to come. So he wrote on the back of the envelope. It is this Saturday at 2. Now I'll mail it. Put on a stamp. He did and started to leave. Wear your raincoat. It looks like rain. He put it on and said, It looks like rain. You'd better stay in, Willie, and ran out to mail his letter. Walking to the mailbox, Peter looked at the sky. Dark clouds raced across it like wild horses. He glanced up at Amy's window. She wasn't there. Only Pepe, her parrot, sat peering down. Willie, didn't I tell you to stay home? Oh, there's his puppy. Yep. I think Willie wanted to go with Peter to mail the letter to Amy. Peter thought, what will the boys say when they see a girl at my party? Suddenly, there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. A strong wind blew the letter right out of his hand. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Peter chased the letter. He tried to stop it with his foot, but it blew away. Then it flew high into the air. Oh no. And landed, skipping across a hopscotch game. The letter blew this way and that. Peter chased it this way and that. He couldn't catch it. Oh no! Big drops of rain began to fall. Just then, someone turned the corner. 
It was Amy. She waved to him. The letter flew right toward her. She mustn't see it or the surprise will be spoiled. They both ran for the letter. Oh, 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 oh. So there's Peter and there's Amy. In his great hurry, Peter bumped into Amy. He caught the letter before she could see it was for her. I don't know why he doesn't just give it to her. Quickly, he stuffed the letter into the mailbox. He looked for Amy, but she had run off crying. Uh-oh. I'd say when he bumped her and, and then didn't say anything, it made her sad. Now she'll never come to my party, thought Peter. He saw his reflection in the street. It looked all mixed up. Aw, poor Peter. When Peter got back to his house, his mother asked, Did you mail your letter? Yes he said sadly. He thinks Amy's not going to come because he wasn't very nice to her. Saturday came at last. Everyone arrived but Amy. Shall I bring the cake out now? His mother asked Peter. Let, let's wait just a little, said Peter. Now, bring it out now, chanted the boys. All right, said Peter slowly. Bring it out now. Just then, the door opened. In walked Amy with her parrot. A girl, ooh, said Eddie. Happy birthday, Peter, said Amy. Happy birthday, Peter repeated the parrot. A friend is a friend, right? Peter's mother brought in the cake she had baked and lit the candles. Everyone sang. Make a wish, cried Amy. Wish for a truck full of ice cream, shouted Eddie. A store full of candy and no stomach ache. But Peter made his own wish and blew out all the candles at once. What do you think he wished for? I don't know. Could be anything. He might have wished for everyone at his party to be good friends, even though Eddie wasn't very nice to Amy. Sometimes it goes like that. All right, last story of the night we have Down by the Barn. The story is written by Will Hillenbrand. I think written and illustrated, yes. And this mm -hmm. is another one of our Missouri Building Block Picture Book nominees. And this was a picture book nominee in 2015. But I always like to show this label right here to my grown up friends whenever I read one of these stories, because that's how you know that's a good story that's already been read, someone else already loved it. All right, Down by the Barn, written and illustrated by Will Hillenbrand. Oh, gosh, this is our title page. Down by the Barn, Will Hillenbrand, it's our author illustrator, and our publishing information right here. And it looks like it looks like we we are gonna be down at the farm. It's down by the barn. That does make sense, doesn't it? Here we have some early illustrations. A scarecrow looks like he's running. Here we go. Down by the barn, early in the morning, see the little wagons all in a row. 
It looks like a train. That makes me think of my friends. I have two friends who like trains. See the tractor driver pull his little lever? Puff, puff, click, clank. Off we go. Down by the cows early in the morning. See the little calf waiting to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clank. Moo. Down by the chickens early in the morning. See the little chick waiting to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clink. Moo, moo, beep, beep. Off we go. Down by the pigs early in the morning. See the little piglet waiting to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clank. Moo, moo, peep, peep, wee, wee. Off we go. Down by the geese. Early in the morning, see the little gosling ready to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clank. Peep, peep, wee, wee. Honk, honk. Off we go. Down by the sheep early in the morning. See the little lamb waiting to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clink. Moo, moo. Beep, beep. Wee, wee. Honk, honk. Ba, ba. Off we go. Down by the goats, early in the morning, see the little kid waiting to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clank, moo, moo, peep, peep, wink, wink, honk, honk, ba, ba, nay, nay, off we go. Uh-oh! Oh no! Splat! The tractor driver got him with the bucket. I thought that fox was gonna eat that baby chick. I was I was upset. Down by the cats early in the morning. See the little kitten waiting to go. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clank. Ma, ma. Peep, peep. Oink, oink. Honk, honk. Ba, ba. Down by the children's barn, early in the morning, see the baby animals exit in a row. See the tractor driver pull his little lever. Puff, puff, click, clink. Here at last. And there they are, all sharing a story together. Oh, just like we're doing right now. Isn't that nice?
that's it for bedtime stories tonight, friends. I hope you all enjoyed our bedtime stories. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy some good fun time celebrating with your families. And then I will see you next Wednesday right here for story time. Have a great night, friends.